to the game. Shalom, shalom. Hmm. All right. I'll be y'all. We do thank you for all things. We bless your magnificent, wonderful name. Uh, speak to us your words of truth. In the mighty name of Yahshua. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Um, let me read this, this letter here real quick. Got a letter. Now, this, this came before the feast, you know, but I got so, so caught up in the feast and stuff, but I did keep it right here. Um, and I believe, yeah, this is from Carl and Laura in Minnesota. Y'all remember them, young couple. They, um, I will go with this one right here. To our dear pastor, elders, and saints of Straightway, uh, thank you for your thoughts and prayers towards us and our growing family as per your request. This is a short status update for the upcoming arrival of the baby as well as ourselves. As far as we can tell, the baby is growing and developing just fine. But uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, well, let me read this one. They gave me an update. Uh, Pastor and saints, it's literally impossible for me to thank you and the, uh, other saints enough for all the prayers surrounding my wife, the child, and, and the birth. My wife gave birth to an incredibly healthy, happy baby boy, Gershom Ephraim, uh, the 11th day of this 7th Hebrew month. Of course, that's pretty good. That's uh, what they call October the 4th out there. At 3.56 a.m., the whole birthing process was a flat-out miracle. And I know that the Most High was ever guiding everything under his shadow of protection. I would love to share our testimony. However, I know that you are an extremely busy man. Uh, and I don't want to take up more time uh, of your time that I have to. Perhaps... Uh, we can tell you all about it in a follow-up email or can call in the blog talk on Shabbat. I do have a question regarding an issue with my son that we had planned on getting him circumcised eight day if he was a boy. However, due to when he was born, uh, that would be put on the Shabbat or the 11th, if I'm not mistaken. I think I answered it in my email, though. Uh, we are able to find a place to circumcise him several days after his birth, um, but they won't or can't do it on Saturdays or Sunday. And they closed Sunday and Friday down. All right. Uh, I know that it's important to our hearts to be circumcised than actually the flesh, and that the Israelites only uh, recircumcise themselves when going into the land. Uh, is this statue primary for being in the land or merely a shadow of things to come? Long story short, I want to keep his laws as best as I can uh, without giving too many excuses, pass and bias, uh, what I can and don't do. Pastor, we thank you for everything that you do and say. God bless. Keep you shalom. All right. Well, shalom. Well, yeah, get them circumcised. And Israelites should be circumcised. Uh, it's just literally our covenant. You know, a lot of people, and I'm not saying these people. I'm just saying a lot of people spiritualize a lot of things. Uh, we've had plenty of Israelites that came into this faith um, that wasn't circumcised. They got circumcised. This is all within the last year, so I just don't talk about it. If you understand what I mean, I just don't talk about it because you have to understand that Abraham wasn't circumcised, but did the father have him, did he get circumcised? Let's go to the Well, he gets circumcised then. Ain't no need to spiritualize it. Hmm? I just think y'all and my mom and dad had enough sense to circumcise me when I was a baby and didn't know no better. Everybody said, well, he got to be circumcised eight day. Abraham was, wasn't circumcised eight day. These folks amaze me. Huh? It's amazing, isn't it? The things that we go through, isn't it? People are just so spiritual nowadays. So spiritually mind, no earthly good. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to continue to keep on talking about this, this envy thing. All right, this envy thing. Um, and we're going to spend the majority of the time over in the Apocrypha. And y'all need to understand something about the times that we live in. All right, about the times that we're living in. Um, most people are just really, truly not concerned about your spiritual welfare or being. Uh, many times you're not. And, and, you know, when you keep it at the forefront of your mind that we're only one breath away from eternity and stuff, maybe you'll be a little bit more serious about how you take life. 
Does that make any sense? Um, and he, he, of course, you know, look at the devil. The devil is a lie. You wouldn't believe it. Of course, I preach a message on envy, then I start getting all these reports about all these devils stirring up in saints all over the place, just cutting the food. It happens. You know what I mean? It happens. And, um, you know, most people think that the enemy is always working in everybody else, but not them. They give themselves passes and buys, um, and they never get better. They continue to keep getting worse and worse and worse, if you understand what I mean. Of course, the, the scriptures go on to say uh, deceived and being deceived. And we don't want you to fall prey to any of that, if you understand what I mean. Um, if you can just believe what the scripture says, you'll be fine. You know what I mean? There's a lot of despising that's going on um, to today uh, for no reason whatsoever at all. Matter of fact, go to, I think it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Um, Brother Shane, and get verse, um, it's either 13 or 18, one of the two. I think it's verse 18. When you have it, go ahead and start reading. I'm talking about despising, okay? I need for y'all brother and also to get to the point to, that when y'all hear me going a certain way spiritually, you already know where the scriptures are. You should automatically know what the word is. You understand what I mean? I need, I need a brother to step up the plate to do that so that a lot of times that when I'm up preaching and teaching this stuff, if I call for the scripture, you already there. Does that make any sense? And the way you do that, if I'm talking about envy, then you should have at least a knowledge of where at least four or five scriptures of envy on that. Does that make any sense? Because you can't expect the spirit to just put it in you if you haven't studied to show yourself approved. Read, brother, Shane. But brother I Shane, would you not. Gonna read? Yes. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. No, that ain't what I want. I'm talking about the one about despising. Read 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. That's what I just read. Read verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Somebody give me a Bible. I, I, left, my, I left my down. Just give me the Bible. That's 1 Thessalonians 4, 8. Yeah, I'm fine. There it is. Uh... Let's go to verse, yeah, read it. Here you go, brother. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man. All right, stop for a second. So if anybody despise, they're not despising man. Is that what the book says? They're not despising man. Y'all get that? Read that again. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man. Do y'all get that? Don't care who it is. All right? Don't care who it is. Y'all follow me? Read on. But yeah. Who does he despise? Yeah. That's why all of us have to guard our hearts. And the scriptures teach that we need to guard it with all diligence. You know what I mean? I've had people uh, say to me, well, I was mad. And that's the reason why I said it. And I'll say it like I said it the last time. Nobody give a damn because you was mad. You still are charged to keep a governor on your tongue. A fool lets his tongue slip. I had somebody say that a few months ago. I was mad. So I said, but we can't be a fool uttereth all his mind. Y'all understand anything? Just because you are feeling a certain way or or, or a certain spirit is coming up over you or something like that, that don't mean you give place to the devil. Does that make any sense? He that despises, despises not man. And because when we despise, we believe we despise who? Man. But somebody need to tell you that your offense, your despising, your envy, your jealousy, all this is rooted in the same thing. It, it, it's towards him who told you not to. Do you think this could help us be more sanctified? Do you actually think this could help us be more sanctified? 
He that despises despises not man, but Yah. Uh oh. That changes everything, don't it? Well, we'll see for how long. Because we have a bad habit of letting things slip. Are you following me? Now, y'all realize I, I'm, I'm talking, but there's a lot of other people on the other side of that camera that's listening to as well, so I'm talking to them as well. So don't give yourself a pass. All right? So he that despises, despises not men, but he despises y'all, read. Who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. That's amazing, because he's given each one of us his Holy Spirit, but then we're going to despise what y'all has given to us. See, we have to talk about these things as spiritual warfare, because if we don't, what will happen is, is we'll go on putting on faces, putting on this, putting on that, but it really truly won't be sincere from the heart. And because a lot of the assemblies are lack in spiritual warfare, and they avoid the subject altogether, that's the reason why we keep having relapses and reoccurring attitudes. Are you following? We're going to go over to the Apocrypha for a second. First Maccabees um, 8, verse 15. And I'm going to read verse 15, 16. Envy, and, and, I, and I put on this, the eye of the wicked, which is manifest in an offense. Now, see, you have to understand, we're spiritual today, so if we are offended a lot of times. We, what we do is we, have you ever seen something that it, um, when you're cooking, um, it's got a little percolator on top, and, it's, and the steam is, is causing, it, causing the top to go, it starts whistling and carrying on. So like, that's how we are. We're just like that little pot with that top and stuff. What we do is we sit there in offenses and percolate and simmer and get really getting hot before the top blow. And when somebody's offended, we're already spiritual beings. If you've been doing this any length of time and have any discernment, you can tell when somebody's offended. We had a real good feast, but man, I could point out at least three, three people that were full of offense. I think y'all I think was only three. Full of it. Sporting themselves. Everybody like, you got to be kidding me. If I gave you that name, I, and then you go back and look at it in your head, you'll go, how did I miss that? It's a shame too, isn't it? Sporting themselves with their own destruction while they feast with you. I kid you not. And remember, when you despise, you ain't despising man. You may think you are. But you're despising the father. But the enemy got you believe is doing. See, it's good that we know this. How else can we correct our behavior? Because we already proven we're not going to be corrected by man. Y'all is going to have to be the one to do it. And that comes at our picking and choosing and accepting of his word. I, I give people instruction, corrections, rebuke all the time. And I watch them defy it all the time too. I mean, just like I talked last Sabbath, something simple, lose weight. All right, if they don't lose weight, what are they doing? Define me. Now, are they define me? No. Define who? The Father. Because I didn't tell you nothing that was going to cause you to sin. Did I? You may not want to do it. Why? Your will involved. If I told you to eat more, you'd be glad. You'd receive that, wouldn't you? Isn't that true? Which one was the right, which one was the right way? Both of them were. If you eat, you drink, you eat unto the master. At least you're supposed to. <laughs> you understand what I mean? You get corrected, then don't despise the chastening. Oh, that ain't the most high. Well, how does he chase you then? Unless you get rebuked and then that spirit comes in and he admonishes you. That ruah does. Because most of us, we don't chasten ourselves. No, we don't. We're not interested in perfection. You can get two people behave two different ways at correction. You can get one that will say thank you. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for the instruction. Thank you for the rebuke. And then you'll watch their life and see the improvement. You'll get another one that will hold his tongue, but fire is in his heart. 
because they didn't receive it. I kid you not. Let's go to the book right here. Let's see what the book says about envy. Okay, 1 Maccabees 8.15. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house, wherein 320 men sat in council daily, counseling away for the people, to the end that they might be well ordered. See, now what they was doing, they was establishing themselves, getting themselves ready so they can be ordered because there was a people already in disarray and out of order. So they're trying to reestablish order here, okay? Then look what it says. And that they committed their government to one man every year. In other words, they didn't have just one person doing it the whole entire time. At this particular time, reestablishing the order, they committed the government to one man every year. And look, who ruled over all their country. And that all were obedient to that one. See, today we don't think we have to be obedient to nobody. And we, how, how can we do that? If we, if the, the instruction teaches us we're supposed to submit ourselves one to another. Isn't that true? Huh? Because you can't have, that's like the, in this country right here, allegedly, we just play the game. The president is, is the chief, commander in chief, right? He's the one that's calling the orders, calling the shots and everything else. If, if, if now he's got advisors and everything else that can advise them other ways, but still the sway and everything is going, it, it, it's his decision. And he has the weight of the country on him. He makes a wrong decision and stuff. Then people are going to pay with their lives. And people are paying with their lives anyway because we're dealing with devils nowadays. You know, they don't care about, uh, you know, the, the poor folks who join their armies and stuff being cannon father for their New World Order agenda. They don't care nothing about that. You know, but you don't understand what I'm trying to say. You can't have um, uh, um, all chiefs and no Indians. Is that making sense? <laughs> all right. So look what he says. Um, and all obedient to that one, and that there was neither envy nor emulation among them. Why? Because they had order. They had order. There was no envy and emulation among them. Let's go to wisdom. Wisdom 2. 23 through uh, 23, 24, and then chapter 3, verse 1 in wisdom. For Yah created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. That's the way he created Adam in from the very beginning. All right, he had no sin, wasn't touched by it at all. Look at this. Nevertheless, though envy of the devil came a death into the world. See how big his envy is? This thing is huge. And they that do hold of his side do find it. You see, what, you, you find it? Yeah, find it, you're, you're going to find the devil. Isn't that something? You're going to find the devil being envious. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of Yah, and there shall no torment touch them. Y'all getting this? Huh? Let's go to, let's keep on reading, okay? We're going to read on a little bit more. Because you, we need to think about what, what does persecution looks like towards man. You know, we are the saints of the Most High Yah. Is that right? And the world, is no, it, it's obvious that they hate us. And the reason why they hate us is because we're not like them. You know what I mean? We commit no offenses against them and something, but, but there's just a different spirit. All right? So let's read on here a little bit more. Let's go to verse 2. In the sight of the unwise they seem to die all right and their departure is taken for misery I'm talking about saints that pass on especially ones that are being persecuted and they're going from us to be utter destruction but they are in peace this is the reason why you need to live a life keeping the commandments because I mean, we have testimonies and documents and, of people who have been literally tortured and, and, and literally laughing at the people who's torturing them. That's because they had a closeness with the Father. But if you're full of envy or even have a little bit of envy, envy in you, you can forget them, them, them angels protecting you and watching over you. See, some way, somehow, Yah has a way to keep you from the pain that the enemy is inflicting upon you. 
But you have to be walking close to him. And some of you, you ain't close to him at all. I don't know what it is. Something about life has got you lethargic. But you think about that. If it ever comes to the time where they're going to persecute us for serving the Father. All these people getting burned and singing songs. And everybody in the crowd, the limitations of the crowd are glorying at our death. And, and we don't feel nothing. He said he would give his angels charge over thee, wouldn't he? But what if you had some of this mess in you, though? Y'all getting this? All right, let's, let's go on here. Verse 3 again. And, and they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Is that beautiful? Now my question is today is, is your hope still on the kingdom? Now I know you're going to give the hallmark answer, yes. But is it truly really on the kingdom? You know, and having been a little chaste, chastised, excuse me, they shall be greatly rewarded. Isn't that something? And it called that a little. A little. But yet they shall be greatly rewarded for Yah proved them. See, that's why I keep telling you, we're all going to be tested and tried. He's, you know, everybody would love to believe your testimony and stuff, but you ain't getting out of here without being tested and tried. Your testimony is going to be put to the test. If Abraham's testimony had to be put to the test, you ain't getting no bias. He's a father of faith. Y'all getting that? Put to the test. And y'all need to get your hearts ready for being put to the test. Because all, all of life up until the, the grand test comes is nothing but skirmishes to determine how you're going to behave. And so you think about how many things that you fail on a constant basis. Because we're not being attentive to our souls. You know, the chaos of this life it will easily take you away. Take your focus off. You understand what I mean? But the Most High, he got a plan for all of us now. For well, Yah proved them and found them worthy of himself. That's what we want to be, right? Let's go over here to um, Shirak 9. Chapter 9, verses uh, 10 through 15. For Satan, not an old friend, for the new is not comparable to him. A new friend is as new wine. Listen to the wisdom of this now. When it is old, thou shalt drink it with pleasure. Not when it's new. Because, see, when it's old, you, you know, you grow together, you begin to learn each other, you know each other. You understand what I mean? Because you grew together. New wine don't taste better than old wine. Are you following? All right, let's do the book now. Envy not the glory of a sinner. For you know not what shall be his end. You know what I mean? A lot of times we look at the sinners and wonder why they got certain things or they obtain certain things and stuff. Don't, get, don't let that be your focus. Your focus should be in the, in the kingdom to come. Are right, you following me? Don't set up and envy him. Look at this. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Y'all hear that? That's a big one. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. But remember... They shall not go unpunished unto their grave. That's why I keep telling you. Why do you think a lot of people sit up on these so-called term, they term these things called a deathbeds for long periods of time suffering? You know, we try to tell you all the time, some men's sins go before them and some men's sins come after. Are you following me? And you got these, these non-repentant sinners and these people are sitting up and suffering for years on end, just deteriorating and just too prideful. 
Don't let that be you. That you end up being so deceived and so blinded to yourself that you make excuses for yourself and, and everybody else, and you're the victim of everybody else. And yet you're the only one feeling the pain. Hallelujah. Look at this. This is wisdom. Verse 13. Keep thee far from the man that have power to kill. So shalt thou not doubt the fear of death. And if thou come to him, make no fault. Lest he take away thy life presently. Remember that thou goest into the midst of snares. And that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. As near as thou canest, guess at thy neighbors and consult with the wise. Let your walk be with the wise and all your communication in the law of the Most High. All your communication in the what? I mean, come on. You can only talk about foolishness. Football, basketball, that, that stuff exhausts itself so fast it ain't even funny. But, man, you can continue on with a good conversation in the law. The most I never exhausted. And not only that, keep, keep your spirit right, too. Hallelujah. And, and the secrets of your dog heart won't even be revealed. Isn't that true? And this is wisdom. Ecclesiasticus. Uh, that's what Sh Sirach is, okay? Let's go to 30, 21. 30, 21 uh, through 24, all right? Listen very closely, okay? Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Notice, this is something that you, you by your own choice, you give it. Y'all hear that? Your own choice, you give it. Because you make choices and decisions all the time. So the instruction is, is don't give your mind over to heaven. There's many things you can think of just cause you to just get heavy. Don't give your mind over to it. Leave it alone. Don't even mellow with it. You can sense it starting to make it, make it heavy, man. Flee and run from it like, like the plague. Why? Because the enemy is trying to draw you in. Yeah, he is too. All right? Listen to this. And afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. That means when you start reasoning in your own mind. Safety is in a multitude of counselors. Not you, yourself, and I. You're not a multitude of counselors. All right? The gladness of the heart is the life of man. So think about how happy you want to be at all times then. Notice it says the life of man. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. Think about it. If you want to see good days, live a long life, keep your mouth from guile. It's this tongue right here, life and death. Come from that heart. Huh? Just be joyful so you can have prolonged days and then go down the grave in peace. Love thine own soul and comfort thy own heart. Now wait a minute. You have to love yourself and you got to bring comfort to yourself. Uh oh. Now said a mouthful now ain't you? Your husband ain't going to comfort you. Your wife ain't going to comfort you. Every time you turn around somebody's looking to steal some type of joy from you. But you have to agree to allow it to happen though. And especially you post sisters and you roller coaster rides y'all be on. That's because y'all a weaker vessel. Uh, what about y'all brothers? See, can't say nothing to the sisters without. So say we didn't say nothing. You said it. Somebody out there thinking it. Are you following me? I mean, the Most High is trying his best to keep us at peace. And then to keep peace in the house. Huh? So love yourself and comfort your own heart. Have you ever had people trying to talk to you and try to comfort your heart and yet you still can't get no comfort? Why? Because you reject the words. 
It's your choice to be comforted. Well, I don't want to fake it and put on. You're already faking it and put on acting like an ass. Is that the real you you want us to believe? Is that the real you you want us to believe in? Uh-oh. If that's real you, let us know. Remove sorrow far from thee, for sorrow have killed many, and there is no profit therein. This is heavy duty. Envy and wrath shorten the life. Look at that. See, we're on this subject right here trying to prolong your life. Except the fact you can't control what other people are doing. And nobody is worth your joy being stolen. If you're so concerned about and you have all this heaviness on you, chances on you, you're in chances are you in transgression somewhere. Because when you're on the law of Yah, you get nothing but peace. Does this make sense? All right, listen to this. Envy and wrath shorten the light, but carefulness, meaning cautious in one actions, bringeth age before the time. Y'all getting that? Bringeth age before the time. When you worry, you're curious, and all this other all junk, you understand what I mean? A bunch of stuff, all this that, that, that brings on the heaviness of the soul. You ever notice when you're free in the most high you really truly don't have your guard up looking for anything. But you're already protected. Because it's just a spiritual protection. Man, this envy ain't nothing to play with, brothers and sisters. All right? 37, chapter 3710, Ecclesiastic is a Shirak, all right? Consult not with one that suspecteth thee. You mean to tell me I ain't got number one wild out of the whole entire congregation on that one? Well, we see you, we know you. Who see you? Who know you? I say it again. Consult not with one that suspected thee, and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. Ooh In other words, don't tell them nothing. <laughs> what do you think you're going to get if you tell counsel to somebody that envy you? You're going to get a blot. More than a blot, too. You're going to get trouble. Look at that. Wisdom, huh? Well, I need to know. You know you don't. You don't even know nothing. Y'all need to highlight that. Highlight, underline, and buy you one of them nine-volt batteries that's got them LEDs and stick it in there. <laughs> all right, a little more wisdom here, all right? Verse 11. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. Don't you ever go talk and get into a face of a woman that you know is jealous. You hear that? Neither with a coward in matters of war. <laughs> what we look like trying to consult a coward? Hey, what we gonna do about this? That book is gonna be looking <laughs> he gonna be looking for the out every single time. You don't want it make, you don't put him on your war council. <laughs> this is just wisdom huh now all this is building to get to something nor with a merchant concerning exchange that's why I keep telling you man don't believe these boogers out here that's controlling the stock market and all this other man just don't believe a word that they saying these are jackals nor with a buyer of selling 
you go to a car lot, you're going to get jacked. I'm just making it plain. They're going to jack you. They're going to jack you. And even if, even if you do negotiate and come to an agreement and stuff, they're still going to be on the upper hand because they're going to make some profit somehow. You follow me? Here's the key. Here's the kicker. Nor with an envious man of thankfulness. Why do we have a hard time being thankful in the first place? And you know, it just don't make any sense to me. Defrauded, that's a good one. Defrauded and no telling what you got going on in your little world. You know, them people carry a spirit about them. There's an aura about them. You understand what I mean? There ain't no peace to the wicked. You know what the book says? Nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness. There's no way that a man that is unmerciful can ever be kind. Y'all get this? It's just not in him. These are instructions on the way of life right here. Huh? Nor with the slothful for any work. You know, some people just born lazy as hell. They probably ain't born that way. They just, they just that way. They choose to be that way. And a lot of times they're that way because they're afraid they're going to do more than somebody else. This is good instruction, isn't it? You detect somebody's lazy, man, stay away from them. Because all you're going to do is mess yourself up. No with an hireling for a year of finishing work. Meaning you're going to draw it, drag it down and draw out the job and give me more money, give me more money. Nor with an idle servant of much business. Hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel. That's another one you ought to highlight and everything else. This is wisdom, brothers and sisters, okay? Verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. What you're supposed to be? Continually with a godly man. That don't mean you bug the hell out of me either. That means just be continually with them. You know, be with them, be in, be in agreement with them, walk with them, be, you know what I mean. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of Yahshua, whose mind is according to your mind. Now, first of all, your mind has got to be continued on the most high himself as well. And will sorrow with thee. You know, when you have the times that the, you know, you have your lows, you got your ups, then you have your downs. You know, they, they, they'll sorrow with you. How you understand what I mean? They won't spiritualize. They, well, brother, just snap out of them and get spiritual. No, because they understand that you're going through a heavy time there. Not that you're meaning to, but it's just, it's just heavy. It's the time. You understand what I mean? If thou shalt miscarry. All right. Sirach 40 verse 5. Wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife, and in the time of rest upon his bed, his night's sleep do change his knowledge. See, you entertain too much stuff, the wrong kind of stuff, all the things you think you know, you don't know nothing. Because it's seeking to indoctrinate you. It's seeking to steal everything that the Most High had already put in your heart the right way. So you go over here tap dancing, touring around in any of these arenas right here, you ain't going to be able to understand the way that you ought to anymore. Because you're infected. You get it? But I tell you, we're going to be on envy for a while. It ain't no one Sabbath hit subject and then we over with. Yeah, that, he's a big one. I know he's a big one because, man, y'all hear all these reports I got from all these people cutting fools. I kid you not. I said, boy, look at that. Done threw a rock and hit the devil from a long way away. Hundreds of miles away, hit the devil. And he just, boy, he just, man. You ever shot a dog in a butt with a BB gun? <laughs> yeah. 
You know what kind of sound it make? Yeah. There's a weeping howl going all, all throughout Israel over that message last Sabbath. Huh? At least we got him. Now you know where he is. He ain't hiding no more. Now get after him. Somebody, I wouldn't shoot no dog in the butt. If he was a little, if he was a little boy, you would. I shot my brother with a BB gun. <laughs> we were boys. What can I say? I didn't think nothing wrong with it. I wasn't the one getting hit by the BB. So. <laughs> oh, boy. But that is something. Let's go over that one more time. Wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife, and in the time of rest upon his bed, night sleep, do change his knowledge. In other words, don't entertain none of that mess. You go to bed, go to bed in peace. Hey, that's a, that's a, a good old scripture concerning um, spouses. Let not the sun go down in your wrath. You don't want that stuff to be festering and stuff, and you hear all tossing and turning. You night your sleep is escaping stuff because you're over worried about a lot of stuff, and your mind is going places it shouldn't go. But you have to keep yourself. All right. All right. Let's go to Tobit. We're going to hit. Uh, chapter 4 verse 7 and then chapter 4 verse 16 okay give alms of thy substance and when you give us alms let not thy eye be envious now that is a mess have you ever seen somebody give alms and they do it grudgingly yeah anyway it's amazing neither turn thy face from the poor and the face of Yah shall not be turned away from thee. That's why I say, you know, you got it in your hand to do good. Why in the world would you want to withhold good? I've known a lot of people like that have plenty of substance. They wouldn't so much as lift their finger but to nobody but what they call their own. Envious. It's a mess. I'm serious. This is the book. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of man's heart. All right? Verse 16. Give thy bread to the hungry and give thy garments to them that are naked and according to thine abundance give alms and let not thy be envious when thou givest alms. That's a mess if you're going to give and then you're going to turn around and have ill will afterwards. You know, you, get, you feel like, you know, them butterflies in your stomach, like somebody gave you a swift kick in it. Ah, oh, never mind. I know you're all spiritual. Never mind. Anyway, I pray that I get to your level one day. Because I still deal with that. Because, you know, I give and sometimes I'm like, dang, what I do that for? Man. I mean, I thought you've been burned as many times as I have, man. I, you go, know, you're like, man, I just died. Yeah, mercy. But I still, regardless, I still just fight through it because I know that is not, watch this, Yah's feeling. Yeah, yes, sir. See, the devil is trying to wear you out. It's in your heart to give. It's in your heart to do right and stuff. It's just the way to, but remember, when you give, you're really giving to the Father. What do you care what man do with his stuff? You know, you just don't want no wicked person to be, you understand what I mean? I'm sorry, you're going to deal with those things. Yeah, you are. You're going to deal with it in life. Yeah, you, yes, you are. I deal with it. Yes, sir. Gee, help us, Father. And sometimes, man, you're scared half deaf to give because of what you may experience. Yeah, I kid you not. Ah, okay. Let's go over here back to Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 14. We're going to read verse 3 and then we're going to hit verse 8 and, and go on down for a little bit, okay? 
Riches are not comely for a niggard. And what should an envious man do with money? Be a fool. See, a niggard is someone who is a stingy and ungenerous person. You follow me? You know there's people that that are old that pinch a whole bunch of pennies and stuff. And next thing you know, when they died, they I guess they thought they was like the Pharaoh and all them. They're gonna take it with them or something like that. You find out the people they live like paupers all their life, and then next thing you know, you find a nest egg, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars, a million, a couple of million dollars, just and you thought they was the poorest thing because they were stingy. And ungenerous. I'm serious. Don't understand the laws of Yah. Verse 8. The envious man have a wicked eye. See, if you're discerning the spirit, you'll know when someone is envious because you can see that wicked eye. It has a certain look. See, anger has a certain look. Being offended has a certain look. And when someone is, is uh, envious, they have a certain look. Every one of them is a different spirit, you know, but they kindred to each other. The envious man have a wicked eye. He turneth away his face and despiseth men. Now, notice, he turned away his face and he do what? Despises man, but watch this. We just got finished reading. If you despise man, who you really truly despise? All right. That was verse 8. Let's go to verse 9. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Always won't. Always won't. Can never be satisfied. You know, be content with such things as you have. Can't stand to see somebody else have more than you got. It only happens among saints. You can walk out here, drive down, or you can drive down the road and see all these these wicked folks got more than all of us. It, that don't trouble you at all. You go to Walmart, you drive down the road. They don't trouble. But if a saint has it, you never thought about. It. Maybe you wasn't wicked. Maybe you wasn't a sluggard. Maybe you wasn't jealousy. Maybe you wasn't full of wrath and anger and bitterness and all the other stuff. And besides all that, why don't you just be content? Sister Carol's still looking at me like I'm crazy because we'll drive down the road and I'll see some old trailer look like a shack. The front yard look worse than Beverly Hill buildings before they got rich. And I go, now that's home. <laughs> she looks at me go. You know, when I'm look, you know, Don't say nothing because he may get some bright ideas and send us back again. I tell you what, the one thing I have learned in life, the less you have, the happier you are. Did y'all hear what I said? I said the less you have, the happier you are. Now, if you've got less and you're full of envy, you ain't going to be happy. Even if you have a lot, you ain't going to be happy. But the less you have, the happier you are. Yeah, that's true. Oh, hallelujah. Um, and the iniquity of the wicked drives up his soul. What does it do? And you're supposed to be a well, a living water. Now, you follow me? See what iniquity does, wickedness does? It dries up your soul. A wicked eye envies his bread. Can you imagine sitting down to something to eat and start complaining? Most people take when I start calling the sisters on certain food as I'm complaining. I'm not complaining because I'm, I'm actually calling it out because we're feeding the saints. And our sisters should know by now if you cook a, you cook a meal here, 
and you jack it up, it'll show up in it'll show up in the food. You said about cooking witchcraft for the saints. You can't be going in that kitchen all jacked up. You better sanctify yourself, just like the book says. When you come into the tabernacle, leave your heaviness, leave your business, leave it all at the door. Before you in that dining hall, whatever issue you got, you better leave it at the door. I've seen so many meals get jacked up around here because people have problems, issues, attitudes. Let's just call it like it is, iniquity. It's an extension of your spirit. Everything you do is an extension of what's going on inside of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Oh, hallelujah. He is a niggard at his table. My son, according to your ability, do good to yourself. And give Yahweh his due offering. Most people don't give nothing. First he required a tent. Then he's asking you to just give a free will offering. And it's just a shame. Then you wonder why you're in shambles. Look at him out there on that camera listening. Look, look at him looking. I can see you squirming in them chairs right now. Remember that death will not be long in coming and that the covenant of the great is not shrewd unto thee. You know, you do things the right way in this life of the Most High. You serve him with a, with a cheerful heart, with gladness. You'll be welcoming You'll be welcoming death and the grave. Oh, death, where's thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? You can only say that when you live right. That is the reward of the righteous at the end. You think about what kind of condition Paul was in. Man, hey, I'm ready. You ready what? Be offered up. Well, I haven't finished my course. I have fought the fight, finished my course. I have kept the faith so now I'm ready to go get my crown people only people talk, people when people talking like that they know something a wicked person ain't gonna say well I finished my course I'm ready to go no they ain't they scared as hell to death cause they know they done cheated life oh hallelujah that's why it's good to be holy be sanctified Set apart, do good and be kind and tender heart and generous towards one another. That's the way to live. That's good life. We do pretty good until these devils start driving by. You know what I mean? We, we stay pretty much relatively at peace until, or oh, now there's one you decide to let the devil in. Told you the devil don't come in until you come in. This tabernacle was at perfect peace until you came in. Now, if you obey the commandment and left all that mess at the door, you really fine. I was thinking myself as I was looking back at the, the message and stuff, and even when I was up here praising, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't. How in the world, y'all remember Shabbat service, right? Shabbat morning, right? How in the world with all that anointing and, and, and all the presence of the Most High that was in this place, that you could just sit there like this the whole time and not buzz? The only way you could do that is if you don't have his spirit. Because, I mean, the most eyes going to touch them that are his. And if he ain't none of his, he can weave right through. Just, hey, he, just, he did that a long time ago in Egypt with the deaf angel. He can weave right past it, too. <laughs> and you wonder why this other person set up here dropping tears and hands up in the air and just is just, just touched by the most eye, and you still sitting there like a, a, a coat rack. 
The most I does, I see it. See, when I see stuff like that, I go, most I ain't dealing with them. Ain't no way. Because you could feel Jesus' presence all in this place. You didn't get touched by it in your heart. He didn't take your heart and just. That's where those tears of joy come from, too. And then some of you so wicked, he's trying to break you. And you're fighting against the will of your flesh and the will of submitting. That's the salvation experience. I tell you, I've never seen a salvation experience that didn't come at first with great pain. How you know? I can go by my own experience. <laughs> great pain. I got great joy afterwards. Yes, I did too. When I was repenting, it wasn't no joyous thing. It was ugly. It was ugly. It was ugly. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I was broken. Truthfully sorry. Man, I saw exactly the man I was. Whoo, what a train wreck. Man, I didn't hold nothing. I didn't, I didn't, I, man, I didn't hold nothing back. I, I left it all on the field. I left it all on the field. Hallelujah. And after I got the victory, boy, shoot, the reporters was trying to chase me down to get a testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah, real salvation experience. That's what the problem with a lot of people, they really truly ain't never met him. That's just a fact. They really truly ain't never met him. Y'all should learn a lot from these, these messages, though, because they, they fool. Hallelujah. Be the Father's will, y'all. Make yourself ready against that day on Shabbat as we continue on with envy and jealousy. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Glory to the King. We bless your magnificent name, Father. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Yahweh, my strength and my redeemer. You dismiss the beautiful name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Shalom.